Um, yeah, we, we, we're, we're here to, um, to talk a little bit about our products, some of our products. We have so many products, so we have to choose a little bit. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to start with, with present to you a little quick the new D7200. D7200 is a camera that looks basically the same as the D7100. D7100 is the one of the most sold uh, DSLRs out there. It's a very popular camera, very high spec camera. Um, the D7200 is better basically on all points. We have a um, we have a camera that is made to produce stunning imagery. We have the new X-Speed 4 engine in it, which has makes picture quality a lot better. Lower noise, more details, better color rendition. So all things that, that comes with the image is better. We also have a really sensitive autofocus system in this camera. So when you go to Argentina and you run into this really nice T-bar, and meet this guy, you want to take a picture of this guy, you can rely on that focusing system to be precise, quick, to give you the image you want. This shot is uh, in the against light at 6400 ISO. It's pretty, pretty darn good with all the details, the dust, and the light. Or imagine if you go into this jazz club and, and uh, want to take a picture in the very low uh, evening light on the street. You can do that. You can rely on the D7200 to, to produce the, the picture quality that you like. Even in lighting, you can control. If you are in a situation where you want to control the light, you want to control the, the image completely, you can use the D7200's FP sync function. The focal plane synchronization is a way of using flash with shorter exposure times than you normally can do. That allows you to work with bigger apertures, even in, in lighting conditions, to allow you to produce flash images with short depth of field. So you can, you can, really, you can really set the image that you like using a focal plane synchronization. It's, it has also great speed and big buffer. The buffer of images are twice as big as on the D7100. The focusing system focuses down to minus 3 EV, has 51 points, and it's really, really fast. Using this as a macro camera is also perfect. This is shot on the 85 millimeter uh, macro lens for DX. It's a very nice, high-resolution lens with this beautiful blooming bouquet in the background. It's a great product. And all these images you've taken with this camera can easily be shared through your smartphone, iPad, or, or other smart device with the built-in Wi-Fi in the camera. So you can take real images and share real images, uh, which is really, really nice. It has a lot of features, this camera, but uh, I'm going to show you one, and it's the movie capabilities that we have in the, in the D7200.
Beautiful, huh? Not bad. So why are you here, Chris? Well, yeah. you're talking about sharing images. Mm -hmm. Say you don't want to share your images. You just want to keep them to yourself. This is the perfect option because you cannot share what you see in the binocular. That's only for you, for your eyes only. But the thing is that when I go out shooting, I realize that very often I forget to look. I just take images, I come home and look at it. But basically what I'm doing is that I'm looking at these fantastic views afterwards. So I think it's extremely important that you remember to look while you're actually out there. And this is why I think that in every camera bag you should have a good binocular. It allows you to enjoy the nature, birds, whatever you might be, in a totally different way than just looking through the camera. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm going to try to select a few products as well, just as Lass is doing. Uh, we have so many different binoculars and field scopes in our range. So I'll, I've picked out, first of all, this one, which is called the ProStaff 7S. Um, and then specifically the compact version that is an 8x30 binocular. 8 times magnification, so it has fully multi-layer coated lenses, which basically means that we get a very high light transmission. So a lot of the light that comes into the binocular also comes out on the other side, which is important, of course, for you to get best possible image. Uh, we have a very high contrast, very crisp and clear images. Um, it's very great er ergonomics. We have a great grip. It's rubber armored, which means that it, even if you're wet, uh, you can hold it with a steady grip. Um, talking about wet, of course, it's waterproof. So it's made for actually bringing out there uh, in the wild. Um, a little later, I will ask Christian about the numbers up there. We'll, we'll save that for a little bit later in yeah. the show. It becomes more fun than I think. It does, yes. yes. So this is not rehearsed at all. No. This uh, is strange. This is strange. Uh, yeah. This is not really how you're supposed to use the binocular, but it shows that it actually can take the weight of one, two, three, four, five rocks. Small so it's, it's very, almost. very <laughs> rough construction. Wow. Um, and you bring it out when you go hiking or whatever it might be. Uh, as I said, it, it's very compact, very lightweight, so you bring it along, it can easily fit into a pocket, either in your trousers or uh, in a jacket. And uh, here you can actually see that you can see very far with the binocular. Uh, it does get sharper than this huh. in the binocular though. Um, and as I said, it's waterproof. So basically, the, the rule of thumb is, so how waterproof is it? Well, it's waterproof enough that if you drop it in the water and you can reach it, you're good to go. If you have to dive to get it, it might be out of sort of the limits of what the waterproofness can do. But this also means that when you've been out and the, the binocular is dirty, you wash it under the, under the tap when you come home and you're good to go. It's not bad, Lasse, is no, it? No, that's really cool. Hmm. How far can you see underwater with it? Well, it... <laughs> not very far, I No, guess. your turn. I, I'm, I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to I'm not going to answer that. You're not going to answer that <laughs> stupid question. Yeah, thank you very much. That was really interesting. Well, you're talking about... about I'm, I'm going to talk about the special product now, the DA10A. So you the mean my product wasn't special <sighs> enough? Yeah, it has seven S, really fancy name. You know what the this S is stands A10 for? A. This is the astrophotography version of the DA10. Mm -hmm. The DA10 might be the, well, I put, let's put it this way. I, I ain't going to be modest now. DA10 is the best camera ever built, okay, point. Um, <laughs> so the DA10A 
is probably the best Astrocam ever built that you can actually move around with, which is battery powered, which you can use to shoot the nebulae. This is the horse head nebulae. This is a stacking of 70 images, I believe. Um, at shot at, um, I have the data here. Uh, do, 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 1600 ISO image of the nebulae, 75 images stacked together. Uh, it has a special low pass filter, uh, or not a special low pass filter, but it has a specially tuned sensor that is more sensitive to the reds in the spectrum. So it allows more red into the system, so we can actually make images out of in the deep space that looks something like it for real. The California Nebulae, uh, also 1600 ISO, 55 images. It's beautiful. This is shot through telescopes. Uh, not all people do have telescopes, big ones at least. I don't think you have in your. No. No, no. Uh, the camera is also beautiful to do starscaping. Uh, this is shot on the brand new 20 millimeter 1.8 at 2.5, aperture 2.5. Uh, it shows a great detail, uh, really nice star sky. Or if you want to go all the way, you put the lens on the camera. The lens that I'm talking about is the 58 1.4. So we just call it the lens from here on. Everybody who sees this image knows it's the lens who shot it. It's one of the few lenses that you can actually buy without being robbed that can produce round circles in the middle and in the edge without any coma. Coma is, a, is an artifact that shows kind of a, like a comet tail on round objects in the, in the edges of the screen. The 58 doesn't have that. It's great for this too, for portraits, for interiors, for anything that you want to produce sharp stuff in, in a center and edge. But the uh, the um, DA 10A, the DA 10. This this I'm not done yet. No, exactly. Why did, why why are did you I doing press that? the button then? Okay, I'm going back just a little bit. But uh, just have the, a question. The, the Sorry. Two okay. two special features except the sensor on the DA 10A. That's good to know. We can set the exposure, the timing of the exposures to 900 seconds, which is good for stars. Well, there is also a virtual exposure control on the live view screen, which kind of emulates a 30 second exposure. It helps you to frame the camera uh, using the live view. So it kind of enhances the, the starry sky so you can see where to point the camera easier. Um, so it's a special tool, great tool, beautiful lenses, stars. And now, Christian, sorry, now this is yours. You Thank have you. good stuff too, you say. Uh, well, uh -huh, well, I right. do. You're, he's trying right. to outsmart me here. But you I just have one question. You said 900 seconds exposure 900 seconds, time. yeah. You know how many minutes that is? I can't count. It's That's 15, way too 15 far for me. minutes. 15 minutes? 15 minutes. Wow. So if you're taking a picture that takes you 15 minutes to actually capture, what are you going to do in the meantime? Yeah. <laughs> You're going to look. Look at the sky with mm. your binocular. And he's talking about the lens. This is the binocular. Right. It's the edge. Um, and it, it is sharp from edge to edge, like nothing I've ever seen before. It's amazing. Mm. And he's using all these fancy words, like coma. <laughs> this one, too, is virtually coma-free, so you get very accurate view of what you're looking at. We have the ED glass, and you can see just from the construction that this is a really, really nice product. We have the ED glass, which minimizes um, chromatic aberration, so basically it makes the image better, sharper, more crisp. Um, and this is an amazing product, as I said. So please have a look at it outside afterwards. Uh, and I'm sure you will be as stunned as I am. Uh, you can also look here. We have a field scope in the same series. Uh, so a field scope is a bigger thing, higher magnification. Uh, and it only has one eye. 
but it gives you the possibility of magnifications up to 75 times. So you can get really close to what you're looking at. But of course, at these high magnifications, you get well, what we in the, the, the imaging world call camera shake. But here it's, well, binocular shake, I guess. Um, which makes the image difficult to look at. So we have made a version with a built-in VR. So same technology as we use in the lenses, but in a binocular. Uh, and this reduces the shake to one eighth of sort of the, the basic what you get without the VR. So even if you have it on a tripod, if you have a strong wind, you get these micro vibrations in the in the um, image, and this takes that away and gives you a sharper picture. They are constructed with a very tough magnesium alloy body. Uh, they have a superior mechanism, so focusing these products is just a pure pleasure. I sound a bit ridiculous. You, you sound like you want to sell your binocular now. I mean, come I, on. I do, yes. Is, is these, <laughs> these guys are out there too, right? Of course, yeah. of course. And also with the field scopes, you have the possibility to con connect them to a camera. So you can connect them either to a DSLR, a Nikon 1, or a Coolpix, and get fantastically long focal lengths up to, with a DSLR, up to 1,750 millimeters, which is much more than you can get with even the longest telephoto lenses. So I think this is a pretty cool, uh, cool product to match up your D810A. You want to show your corner movie now? Yeah, and of All course right. you can use it for other things than star gazing. Outdoor and the far north. For example. In the far north, beyond the Arctic Circle, lays a hidden world. It's a place full of extremes and mystery. Through my work as a photographer, I get to explore such places and create images that show the beauty of our planet. In the wide open landscape, Animals are often hidden from plain sight. I spend a lot of time out there searching the land for wildlife. For that, you need the best glass. When I film and photograph wildlife through the field scope, I'm able to document behavior in detail that otherwise would be out of reach. But sometimes you just sit back and watch. No images. You just marvel at the beauty of nature. From the little auk to the massive glacier. in that corner. I'm sorry. That was a good film. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I, was I, I didn't it? make it. No, no. No, okay, okay. Cool. Yeah, well, that was that was stunning, Christian. I'm I'm going to try to uh try to catch up with you and I'm going to show you the new 300 mil 4.0 face Fresnel ED nano coating, VR sports mode, anything you want in this 800 gram lens. It's tiny. It's, uh, it's, as I said, it's a face Fresnel construction. It's a special lens in the, in the construction that allows us to take down the size. This is basically half the size of the previous 304. Uh, it, it's as small as the 2472.8. A little bit lighter, though. Uh, 
it's a telephoto lens that you can actually carry all the time with you in your bag. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like a telephoto lens. It's, uh, it's something else to shoot with also. It's really sharp. It's really fast. It has a, um, a new VR mode that we borrowed from the 400 2.8 uh, 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 fluorite model, the new one which is not really a VR system that takes away vibration from the actual image, but it, it stabilizes the viewfinder instead, so it becomes easier to track stuff that moves. Um, uh, but the resolution and the detailing and the colors is, is pristine in this lens. It's also very nice for landscapes and animal wildlife. Lucifer here, he's a Capricorn, right? Well, a Stianbok, maybe. Well, that's or what maybe you say. was. Uh, this guy, I don't know the name, but use it for portrait. You know, the details, the skin tones, everything is just beautiful. Or you can run around in the city without looking like a telephoto carrier guy. You have a lens on the camera; it's that small. You can get these compressed landscapes, streetscapes, and all the things that a telephoto lens can give you in this really tiny, beautifully constructed lens. It's approximately, uh, I, I can't remember the price now, I'm really bad at pricing, but the guys at the table know what it, much it costs. Uh, and it's a really great lens for FX cameras, for DX cameras, or yeah, that's what we have, right? Yeah, pretty much. So now, Christian. Yeah. I, I hand this one over with a smile on my face. <laughs> that's actually a tough one. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> How to match up with a 300 mil face Fresnel? That's that sounds pretty good, and doesn't? Yeah, at least when you say it like that, face Fresnel, it's it's a lot harder when you say Fresnel. Yeah, like you did so last time. Last yeah, time, yeah. yeah. It's a difficult word, but uh, you've practiced. It's like a hymn, the yeah. bona in the moon. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you say it in. I don't know um, if that actually came through. I um, don't know well. either. Anyway. I'm going to match it up with the Monarch 7. Mm -hmm. The Monarch 7 is a range of um, binoculars. Uh, there's a small version and there's a slightly larger version. Why the Monarch 7? Well, you're talking about 300 millimeter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If we look at an eight times magnification binocular, it gives you the equivalent mm -hmm. of, say, 400 millimeter lens. So you can actually get a little bit closer with this mm -hmm. one. So I beat you there. But here it comes. This comes now. In my question comes. Yeah, I'm just going to finish. Could yeah. you please explain the numbers up there? Now this is really confusing. And he calls yeah. himself product specialist. Yeah. Um, so so many this numbers. one comes in eight times thirty, ten times thirty, and in eight and ten times forty-two. So what does it mean? Well. The first number, so the 8 or the 10 in this case, is the magnification. So it's quite easy. It magnifies by this factor, say 10 times. But what does it actually mean? I think it's easier to turn it around and say that the binocular reduces your distance by this factor. So if you look at something that is 100 meters away with a 10 times binocular, it looks through the binocular like you are looking at something only 10 meters away. So it re optically reduces your distance to whatever you're looking at. Mm. The second number, mm. in this case 30 or 42, is the diameter of the front lens. The bigger it is, the more light can come in. And the question is how much light that comes out on the other side. That has to do with, of course, the quality of the glass and the coatings. But mathematically, it has to do with the magnification and the objective diameter. So the bigger the difference between these two, the brighter the product. So an 8 times 30 is less bright than an 8 times 42. But also, an, a 10 times 42 is less bright than an 8 times 42. So, to get the maximum brightness from a binocular, you need a l low magnification and a big objective diameter size. Mm. But the, the most common ones are, 
well, around 30 or 42 millimeters. That's sort of the standard. But the Monarch 7, what's so great with this one? Well, it has the ED glass that I talked about earlier. So you get a very, very nice, crisp image. Uh, it has all the best coatings you can think of, uh, like the dielectric high reflective multi layer prism coating. That's mm -hmm. not bad, is it? That's it's really a very long name, it and it's is. good. It's good. The longer the name, the better the, the feature. Must be. That's, that's r the rule. Um, but the thing that actually stands out most with the Monarch 7 is that it has an extremely wide field of view. So basically, your image that you see in the binocular gets very big. You appear, it appears to be big, and also you see a very wide picture compared to most other products. It's, it's measured in degrees, or you can measure it in meters, depending on how you, how you look at it. But this has around, for the eight times binoculars, eight degrees viewing angle, compared to most normal 8x42 that has 6.3. So you see more in the, in the picture, which is much more comfortable to use. It's more relaxing for your eyes. Uh, the shaking doesn't appear as much in a wider field of view. So this is really a fantastic product to bring along. And it doesn't add much weight to your camera equipment. These weigh between three and 600 grams, depending on the size. So it's well worth putting in your camera bag and bring along. Hmm. Um, and it also comes with very comfortable Dupree neck strap. Oh. Yeah. Just, just that, it it's like worth that. Uh, spending the money. Uh, and we're actually going to look at a s quick movie here as well, just to get some inspiration. And uh, not only the Monarch 7 was featured in the, the movie, but we also have, in, in the Monarch range, there is also Monarch 5, which is slightly lower in, in quality, slightly s uh, narrow uh, field of view. So there's always um, a perfect binocular for everyone. When, we, when I hear you now, Christian, you're kind of telling us that we need a binocular. Yeah. 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 Even um, though I didn't know it, I'm, I'm going to get one now. Perfect. I also, 
I, we need to talk about the P900 now, just a little bit. We, we need to. We call it the Zoomzilla. 83 times optical zoom with digital fine zoom on that. So if we will translate this into 35 millimeter, we would have to carry a zoom lens that goes from 24 2.8 to 2000 6.7. That would be, uh, I guess, something around 18 kilograms of weight or something like that. So that's kind of hard. But how can you make it so small? Because the sensor is small. Uh -huh. There are benefits sometimes with smaller sensors. That, that the possibility to, big, to build a lens construction that is really sharp, and in this case, very big, because the sensor is that small. Um, it's a two, three, one third, five, six, seven inches sensor, something like that. I can, I can't remember. You better look it up because yeah, that was not right. Yeah, it's something with inches, and inches is I don't know what it is, but it's a smaller sensor than a DSLR for sure. The camera is around 650 euros, I think, and you can, uh, you can shoot this. This is actually Lucas Gilman's images I'm using here. I hope he doesn't mind. Yeah, uh, this is uh, one end of the zoom, and this is the other end of that zoom from the same position. So you kind of get the, the feeling of the angle of view you get. It has also very high resolution optics. Very nice when it comes to uh, getting you the resolution of that 16 megapixel backlit sensor. Yeah. But it's amazing. If you go back yeah, I can the, go the back. other picture, the, one yeah. more. It's actually, it's, it's pretty sharp for yeah, being, I mean, sharp. you're pretty far away at 2,000 millimeters. Pretty far away, 2,000 millimeters. You can One see of the biggest yeah. issues with these kind of focal lengths, the camera shake and atmosphere, that you're so far away from your subject that you get interruptions in the air. Yeah. It has a brand new VR system made specifically for this type of focal lengths also, but sometimes a light tripod could be a really good handy thing for this type of camera. Uh, beautiful resolution, tones, colors. The lens is fantastic, and, and we all we always get the question with these cameras. Also, how long can you take pictures with this? How far away? Well, the moon, that's pretty far away. But then it's sort of black. Yes. Yeah. Do you see the background yeah. is totally yeah. black? Yeah. You can't see longer than the moon. Hmm. It must be right. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. It has a moon moon uh, scene mode in it, and it also has special. Uh, scene modes for different types of time lapses, for cities, for for stars. Uh, what, what's it called? Star -gazing. Star trailing. Star trailing. Time lapse. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. So you, you can set it up in different different features. Really fun camera. Really nice camera to carry along on a trip. Long zoom. So zoom this is basically an, an all round camera. Yeah. Very much so. For for anything more or less. Uh, maybe not for, um, hmm, yeah, yeah, it is. Sounds you should amazing. have one, Christian, together <laughs> with your binocular. I should, yeah. You get a binocular, I get a camera. Perfect. That's okay. a deal. We trade? Yeah. Good. Thank you. Can I have a big one? I like big ones. <laughs> you do, yeah. Sh show me Actually, it's funny oh. that you mentioned it. Here's Th a big one. That's a big one. Yeah. Because he's talking about Zoomzilla. Oh, I can do 2,000 <laughs> millimeters and everything. I can do more. Mm. This can give you a, ma a magnification of up to 60 times. And that's approximately what, what the I same say? as... Did I say 83? <laughs> yeah. It, we're not talking about the number of times of zoom. Okay. I only have three times. But the equivalent focal length is actually 3,000 millimeters here. So that's not bad. This is an affordable field scope. We're talking about, with a zoom eyepiece, around 600 euros for a fantastic piece of optical equipment. As I said, you can get up to 60 times magnification with the zoom lens, or you can choose uh, a fixed focal length or fixed magnification eyepiece. Generally, the fixed magnification eyepiece gives you better optical quality, a wider field of view, but on the other hand, the zoom eyepiece give you the, the flexibility of changing magn magnification. So you start with the wide uh, setting 20 times, you find what you're going to look at, and then you zoom in. With a high magnification, it can be quite difficult to find your motive. 
even if you see it with your eyes where it is, it can be quite difficult to spot it in the field scope. So that's why you have the zoom, to be able to do that easier. This one, too, is digiscoping compatible. You can use it with Nikon 1 or Coolpix and get a very long focal length. <coughs> and of course, it's waterproof, as I said, with most other of our products. So we have a pretty decent so all piece of... your customers, they like to drop stuff in the water, right? Yes. Yeah, good. Well, yeah. yeah. I think it's more of uh, being out in the rain and sort of nasty weather. Uh -huh. But sure, okay, if you drop it, I... you're pretty safe. I, I rarely go out when it <laughs> rains. <laughs> I yeah. know, yeah. me neither. But uh, I, I've heard that some people do. <laughs> yeah. so, so that's the ProStaff 5 field scope for okay. you. And my, my last little treat is the J5, the new uh, Nikon 1. Smaller, faster, better image quality cooler functions. The design is really easy for us who, who is used to cameras to use because it's basically the same setup as a normal DSLR or a, or, or, or modern profession, more professional compact camera. It comes in three colors, black, silver, and white. Uh, it has all the, the crazy features you, you can think of. Great color reproduction, really fast autofocus. Um, you can actually shoot 20 frames per second with autofocus tracking, um, or 60 frames without autofocus tracking. It can actually take pictures before you take them. So it sort of looks into the future? Yeah, but, but every time I say that, it sounds really <laughs> weird. How, how does it do that? But as soon as you half press the button on the camera, it starts to buffer images. So when you press the button, you take your image, and if you're in the special mode, you can actually back up time before. So if you miss it, you know, when, you're, when your granddaughter takes the first leap into the pool or whatever it is, and you stand there, oh, I missed it. God. The cameras capture that for you. So it's a pleasantly hmm. nice little friend you can use. It, we have a 32 millimeter 1.2 lens that gives you this kind of short depth of field, this beautiful background bouquet, and the detail and the resolution in the in the front. You should really try this little camera. It could be a really nice uh, camera for you to carry on the microplane when you get, because it doesn't weight anything. Uh, the, 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 the weight is nothing in this camera. Picture quality, great. Take a look d at it out there. Does it make coffee? Um, not yet. There because might be there, a there was up on, there. I saw on the grip, there was sort of a Nespresso N. Oh, this one. No, or Christian, this is NFC logo type. Oh. Near field communication. It's very complicated. Yeah. You shouldn't go there. Okay, no. sorry. Um, I, I'm just, I just want a cup of coffee, I think. All the cameras we have talked about now has the possibility to share images through your smartphone. So even if you're way out of, of, of cellular network, you can download images from a camera to your phone and l edit them or whatever you do and share them if you want. This is something... We hope you will get in the future with your binoculars. But you know, yeah. pff, maybe you have to wait a little bit for that. Um, so that, that's my last little um, thing. And oh, here you go then. I can do small. You can do small yeah. also. Of course, you can do small. The J5 is a fantastic piece of camera. It's, I mean, it's the design. It's, it's really pretty to look at, I think. It's small. And so we have to match it up with something. <laughs> and we like pretty things, right? We do. We do. Yeah. yeah, especially these. You can see all the nice colors. You have the pink, the yellow, the black, the white, and the camouflage, which is actually a very good business idea from our side. Think, think about it. You go out into the forest and you drop your binocular. You will never be able to find it again. So you have to buy a new one. It's perfect. So we actually recommend you to get this and not this. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> but this one comes in, in uh, eight or ten times magnification. As you can these, see, these are the standard handheld magnifications. If you get more magnification than, say, ten or maybe twelve times, the image gets too shaky and it's not very comfortable to, to view. So we, we keep it at eight to ten times in most cases. Very compact, fits easily in your pocket or in your camera bag, costs under 100 euro. Not bad, is it? Not bad at all. And still, it's waterproof. 
and stick this water at that price again. Yeah. And as you can see, it's the perfect fusion of outdoor and style. Yeah. So, so this is really your fashion statement here, I think. This is Oris Jule Club, maybe. Maybe the Christmas yeah. gift of the year. Yeah. Could be. Next time. Yeah. Yeah. But so, so what do you, what do you say? Well, if well, it, even if we argumented about who's got the coolest stuff, the smallest stuff, the fastest, the longest, whatever, we have something really important in common here, I think. If you, if the, I think. The, the haircut? No, Christian, sorry, you shouldn't huh? think. But <laughs> it's the glass. I mean, even if we're talking Nikon 1, we're talking Coolpix, we're talking DSLR, we're talking binoculars or field scopes, the glass. So mm. we want to end this little session with a small little, I don't know what you call it. It's a, it's a, it's a small little movie about making of the glass. Tribute to the glass. Tribute to the glass, the mm. Nikkor tribute. Uh, should do we you have that one? Yeah, I can do it. Can you do it? Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, well, guys, thank you so much for sitting in with us and listening to this. And uh